Hey everyone, it's Dan, and in my previous video titled, What is Faith? I briefly pointed out that faithing, according to the verb, involves work. The work of faithing, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 11, which James in his epistle points to Abraham according to the same work of faithing of Abraham. We read, Abraham our father, was he not justified out of works when he brought up Isaac, his son, on the altar? Thus you see that faithing works together with his works, and out of the works the faithing was accomplished. James chapter 2, verses 21 and 22, where verse 20 states that faith without works is died. So the context of the works here, according to Abraham's faithing, his justification into righteousness was the work of faithing, not the works of the law. Which brings us to Romans chapter 9 verse 31, which causes some confusion as it did with me for a while because there was a time not so long ago that I thought this law of righteousness was according to the faithing in Christ, but it is not. It's according to the work of the law. And not only according to that which was written on stony tablets, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3 here, originally given through Moses on the mount, but Paul also mentions black ink here, because this law Israel was pursuing was later written, written on papyrus and vellum. And then even the Jewish oral laws were later written, which make up the large library called the Talmud all in accord with the written law, written with black ink. And why did I choose the thumbnail picture here where a man is holding a book as if he is reading it? Because people can also attempt to attain a law of righteousness according to what is written in the Bible, the Biblos, the collection of modernized manuscripts containing all of the epistles written in black ink, specifically what is termed the Torah, of which people try to live by in contrast to an epistle of Christ, which is according to the Spirit, in whom you were also circumcised with a circumcision non-handmade in the slipping off of the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ, Colossians 2.11, in tablets of fleshly hearts, 2 Corinthians 3.3. 3. But back here to Romans 9.31, let me point out that it's not the law of righteousness, because the word the, which is a definite article, is not in the parsing. It is not in the Greek texts. Therefore, it should not be translated the law of righteousness. It's not defining something that is specific as being the law of righteousness, but rather something that is unspecific. That's why the article is absent. Therefore, it's a law of righteousness which is pursued through the law of Moses. But Christ is the finishing of the law into righteousness to all or every faithing one, according to this law that the nations down took, which Israel was not pursuing. And what kind of law does establish righteousness with God? Well, the law of faithing with the definite article defining a specific law. Romans chapter 3, verse 27, where we read in verse 28, For this cause we reckon a human to be justified in faithing without works of law, according to a law of righteousness. And works of law is in contrast to the work of the faithing. As I discussed in my previous video, what is faith? And specifically, the faithing of Abraham, of which God established the covenant according to the seed of promise which seed must also be correctly cut because there is the seed of Abraham according to the flesh, but there is also the seed of Abraham according to the spirit. In Romans 4.13, Paul is speaking of the seed of Abraham according to the flesh, the genealogy and bloodlines. But the deepest profound truth is seen in Galatians chapter 3, where here in verse 16, he identifies the seed as singular. That is, according to the unity of the spirit, one body, one spirit, one expectation, one faith thing, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is upon all and through all and in all. 
Not just all or every human being, but the all according to the promise. Ephesians 4, 3 through 6. So the seed here are those who share in the oneness and the unity who are of Christ. The all according to the law of faithing. And pursuing a law of righteousness is what we do not want to do. It is contrary to the law of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 21 of which Paul states he was not without, neither was he without the law of God, the all-encompassing law of God, which is distinguished from the law given through Moses, according to Israel's pursuing a law of righteousness through such. And in this verse, those who were without law is speaking of the nations who were without the written law through Moses of which Paul at one time previously among the Pharisaic community was himself pursuing a law of righteousness in Judaism. Again, right here in the epistle of Galatians, he writes, For you have heard in regards to my upward turning once in Judaism, that according to the exceedingness over I persecuted the outcalled of God and ruined it, which he also speaks of the same in Philippians chapter 3 he speaks of his righteousness and in regards to righteousness, that is in the law, one having become unblameable. But in verse 7 he says, But for this cause, whatever was gained to me, this I have counted as loss because of Christ. And included in this righteousness, he counts it as mongrel castings. Verse 8, That he may gain Christ, of course, according to the law of Christ and the law of faithing as one walking according to the law of the spirit of the life in Christ, Romans 8, 2. And if we back up to Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, he says, And to be found in him not having my righteousness, not the righteousness, not a righteousness, but my righteousness, which in the Greek text is seen here in the personal pronoun, imos, mine own righteousness. It's the first person, singular. And what is my righteousness? Self-righteousness. That is out of law, but that through the faithing of Christ, the righteousness out of God, on account of faithing. So the law of righteousness that Israel was pursuing in Romans 9.31 is self-righteousness. My righteousness that is out of law, in contrast to a righteousness that is out of God the same righteousness that is in the law that we read in Philippians chapter 3, verse 6, which Paul deemed as mongrel castings, or doggy poo, loss, because the promise through Abraham was not through this law. For not through law is the promise to Abraham, or to his seed, that he is the law according Elati of the cosmos, but through righteousness of faithing, Romans 4.13. For Christ is the finishing of the law into righteousness for every faithing one, Romans 10.4. But I might add that for those who are not faithing into the law of Christ, the law is not finished. Jesus said, Do not deem that I, yea, I will accuse you to the Father. Moses is the one accusing you, into whom you, yea, you have taken expectancy meaning that their confidence is through the law of Moses and their own ability through such law, John 5, 45. And when Jesus said, but it is easier for the heaven and the earth land to come pass by than one hornlet of the law falls, Luke 16, 17, what we see here is a euphemism, which is a mild or indirect statement as a substitute for a statement that would be considered to be too harsh or blunt when referring to something unpleasant. And the frustration of the Lord here involving this comment is the law in accord with the self-righteousness that is found in a law of righteousness, of which the Pharisees of yesterday and today cannot let fall. And the prophets even spoke of the fulfilling of the law in Christ. Not the law of faithing or the law of Christ, but the law through Moses, which people in such movements as the Hebrew Roots Movement or Sacred Names Movement are adamant about. And if they continue seeking to establish a righteousness that is through 
a law of righteousness in that transitional eon of the eon, the day of the eon in the straightening, when the heavens now present and the earth land are ones having been stored due to his word being guarded for fire into the day of judgment and the whole away loosening of the dishonoring men, they will be judged according to the law, which Paul terms the service of death having been struck in stone by writing, 2 Corinthians 3.7. But back here in Luke chapter 16, verse 17, the statement, but it is easier, according to this euphemism, we might say in today's time, but it is easier for hell to freeze over than that one hornlet of the law falls. When indeed in the day of the eon and the great judgment, the law will come crashing down. When those being judged according to it, wake up to the reality that the Torah was given that we may know exceedingly that we are sinners, failures. And because out of the works of the law, all, every flesh will not be justified in the eye of him. For this cause through the law is the unknowledge of failience. Romans 3.20. In Romans 5.20 we read, And law came in besides so that the astray fall should increase. And this is because of the inability mightiness of the law, being unable in that it was weak through the flesh. See, the law is mighty and perfect, so that the just adequacy of the law may be completed in us, who are not walking according to the flesh, which is identified with the law, but according to the Spirit, which is of course identified with the law of the Spirit of the life in Christ the law of Christ. So our relationship to the law is that we are unable to keep it due to the flesh. And if you ask anyone, do you keep the written law perfectly? Well, they're not going to say yes, I guarantee it. Those who are trying to establish righteousness through the law will say, I try. But James states, whoever guards the whole law but stumbles in one point, he has become liable of all the law. James 2.10. Paul says, but I give testimony again to all, okay? Every human. And of course, here specifically, Paul is referring to circumcision. But the wider context points to, again, my righteousness that is out of law. But he says that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Galatians 5.3. In contrast to those who are made down unworking away from the law, having deadened away to the law, see my video, The Living and the Dead, those trying to maintain a law of righteousness are made down on working away from Christ. And those who want to be justified in the law, they have fallen out of grace. And for as many are out of the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not abide in all of the things having been written in the book scroll it of the law. To do them, Galatians 3.10. And one should really consider this phrase without law, without the law, such as seen here in 1 Corinthians 9.21. Because not only were many among the nations without the law, that is even during the time of the law given through Moses, since the fulfilling of the law in Christ, without law, the righteousness of God has been revealed, being testified by the law and the prophets. Romans 3.21. For we reckon a man to be justified in faithing without works of law. So without law means without the works of the law, but not without the law of God and not without the works of faithing. So the law we are without is the law given through Moses to the sons of Israel, such as the Apostle Paul, who was also pursuing a law of righteousness, which Paul reveals in Philippians 3, 4 is a warrant in the flesh, not the spirit, the flesh, according to his my righteousness, his self-righteousness, his self-justification. He was circumcised the eighth day out of the becoming line of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, and regards to the law of Pharisee. But again, whatever he said was gained to him that he has counted as loss because of Christ. Then in verse 8, he repeats it again. But I count all to be loss because of the superiority of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, because of whom I will lose the all. The all being which he identified with such fleshly things. This is why he could write to Timothy saying, I have grace in God, grace which the law did not provide. 
whom I worship away from here, apo, away from the progenitors, those he listed in Philippians chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, according to his involvement in Judaism. And he adds, in a clean conscience, 2 Timothy 1, 3, and this is so he may gain Christ, the superiority of Christ, not be made down on working away from Christ, but to be down on working away from the law in order to gain Christ and be found in him not having my righteousness that is out of law, but that through the faithing of Christ, the righteousness out of God on account of the faithing. And if you haven't, please watch my video, What is Faith? And so much more could be talked about regarding the law. There is so much scripture on how we were made down on working away from the law where grace and truth came to be through Jesus, John 1, 17. And if the truth be known, those who are involved in this Hebrew Roots movement, the Sacred Names movement, who will fight with you tooth and nail, refuting scripture after scripture after scripture, in the context of this video, Paul terms them mongrels. Look at the bad workers, look at the down cutting, Philippians 3, 2. And if you run across these and try to share the truth with them regarding the law of righteousness versus the law of faithing, remember that it is binding for us who are slaves of the Lord to not do such as quarreling, but to be gentle to all, conformable to teaching, not acting out of badness, chastising in meekness, those antagonizing, if not once God may give them to come into the unknowledge of the truth. And they may sober up out of the entrapment of the Diabolos, as once having been captured alive under by him, into that one's will. Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 24 through 26. So I hope this video helped you to correctly cut the context of the law. It's not that there is two laws. No, the law of God is all-encompassing, which no one is without. It's that there is only one means of establishing righteousness and justification concerning the law of God, the all-encompassing law of God. Because again, Christ is the finishing of the law into righteousness. And the means of establishing a righteousness with God is to give up on your own fleshly ability your self-righteousness in trying to maintain a law of righteousness according to died works without faithing, imagining that God is pleased with you by doing such because the Father is only pleased with what the Son has accomplished through his own faithing, of which we follow through his faithing and out of it. And the way back to the Father is only through the Son, because He is the way and the truth and the life, and not one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. So stay upward turned into the dwelling site of God, and until next time, grace, mercy, and peace in Christ Jesus.